Hello and welcome to this week's IG Live. Today I am really excited because we are talking to not one, not two, but three guests and that is because they have just launched a wonderful new graphic novel, Fighting to Belong. So we are going to be talking to the creators. We've got Amy Chu, we've got Alexander Chang, and we've got Louis Chin and they're all on here and they are kind enough to join on the day that they're having a big launch party. So a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz for them and And we talking. I have some of their books behind me, um, and hopefully we will be talking about the new book that they have collaborated on. Hello. Hi. And I also just talked. We're going to have Amy and Alex join us. I think they are together, so they're going to be joining on the same phone. We can get them on here. So that might make it a little easier because it is a little tricky with so many people. I don't know if you guys can adjust a little bit so we can see you a little better. But we are so. So glad to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Ren. Well, why don't we get started? Maybe each of you, <clears throat> I know this is a little hard with so, with three people on here, but maybe we can just go around and you can each just introduce yourselves and then tell us how you got started um, doing 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 books, the author, or illustrator. Maybe uh, we'll start up with what's at the top of my screen, maybe Alex and then Amy and Louis. Yeah, sure. Uh... Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Chang. Uh, I'm a um, undergraduate sophomore at Johns Hopkins University, majoring in English and Environmental Studies. Uh, I've been writing since uh, since middle school when I started writing my own personal journal, and from then on, uh, my interest in writing just kind of blossomed into a passion. And so I've collaborated with Amy here on a, a couple graphic novels, uh, leading up to this one, and I'm uh, currently working on my own projects uh, as well. Wonderful. How about you, Amy? Oh. Well, hi, um, I'm Amy Chu. And unlike my son here, I, I never aspired to be a writer. I was very happy uh, in the business world. And uh, but then a really good friend of mine, uh, Louie knows her, Georgia, uh, wanted to write and I uh, agreed to help her out and I got sucked into the world and look at me now. Um, <laughs> so I write for Marvel, DC, Netflix, just about everybody at this point. So, uh, and, um, you know, I've been working with Louie there for a number of years. He's one of the first people I met in the business. Yeah, that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you, Louie? Uh, um, so, <clears throat> so, I always love drawing, like most kids, I like, like cartoons, like the comic books, you know, always, always something I was interested in. So. Um, I went to school for like design and advertising. That's like illustration adjacent. It's not really what I wanted to do, but I, I always did like illustration and comics on the side and just kept on creating, you know, and it uh, manifested to me work with Amy. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. And, and uh, I know you guys aren't able to see the comments going by, but you've got a lot of people saying hello and supporting you. And um, tell us about your new book and all of you working together on uh, The Fighting to Belong, Volume 1, which just came out. As I mentioned, you actually have a, um, a launch party happening today. So tell us about the book. I don't know who, who wants to, to start on that. All right. I'll start. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting, of course, because we've, we've got a big party going on tonight. But um, yeah, it's, a, it's it, I've written a lot, actually, as it turns out. But this is probably the most important book I've written so far with uh, Alex here in that it is, uh, first of all, we can't make stuff up. It's a history book, but it's a history that every uh, child and every adult should know. Uh, it's part of American history, but it's not stuff that uh, any of us grew up with. Louis, right? You would say so like the, there's hardly anything about Asian Americans and here's where we get into this distinction where I think there's a good portion of the country and there may be even some Asians themselves who don't think of themselves right as that we are part of this history and have been for a long time and uh, it was it's just simply not reflected in the education that we get and so we thought well we need to somehow fill that vacuum and I, I'm going to say, first and foremost, this was not my idea. Actually, Louie and I worked on a comic book uh, for the Museum of Chinese Americas. And I think that's kind of what got things started. Uh, an old friend of mine from college 
uh, reach down and say, hey, you know, um, have you done anything else? We've, we've done, we did a little bit of stuff for the New York Historical Society, but nothing like this. So it's it's been really not just a, a, a work of passion, but just, you know, I think it, it really is the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but we needed to get Alex involved, too, because he also brings in a new perspective, right? Um, uh, he's closer to the generation that's supposed to be reading this, right? right. So very important <laughs> to not write a book for us, but write a book that kids will actually enjoy. And that's the hardest part, right? Right. And then I saw in some, one of the promo pieces that I saw said that um, belonging begins with education. So uh, you already touched on this a little bit. Why is this such an important book to have? I don't know, Louis, do you want to talk about that? Uh, well, I think that for other people to understand um, what other cultures like go through, maybe creates like some sort of empathy where you could just relate to each other a little more. So I guess educating yourself on, you know, maybe groups of people you don't familiar with would help with that. Right, definitely. I, and like you said, this is an important book, not of course for Asian American kids, but really for all of our kids, we need to know this history. And I love that you chose the graphic novel format. What was the thinking behind that? Well, I think the main idea was that we wanted to we wanted to communicate the history and the content to uh, you know middle grade readers, and and thinking about it, like we we're collaborating with the Asian American Education Project, who have already established their own curriculum of uh, AAPI history, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander. And we were thinking, like, what's what, like, what's the best medium to communicate this to middle grade readers? And I myself, like, I recall, like, especially like in elementary and middle school, like the one, the like, the one type of book that I always enjoyed reading would be like graphic novels. And like, I can still remember like spending time in the local library, just like reading through graphic novels that I always found interesting, and then reading them to completion. And so we think we figured that as a visual, as a visual format graphic novels are a great way to introduce this content to young readers and may maybe like introduce them, but introduce them to this uh, content and maybe like further that interest with supplementary uh, like educational resources. Cause you, you like, it's a lot easier to like appeal to them that way rather than like giving them like a big textbook for them to like okay. sift through. And yeah, so. and, and there are studies that show that not just kids, but everyone learns better when it's uh, in this kind of visual narrative. Um, the New York Historical it was actually very contentious, I believe, to try to do Chinese American history in that format. But the end result, I mean, everyone remembers this exhibit, and this it's a great way to synthesize a lot of potentially difficult information in a much more, well, especially with Louis' art, right? It's much easier to understand what's going on and feel um, back to the empathy thing, right? So, uh, empathy is super important for all of us right now to understand everyone's experience. It is Black History Month, so we acknowledge that. And all a lot of our um, experiences are similar and interconnected. And that's something that we want to make sure everyone understands when they're reading this kind of thing. So once you had this idea, how did you decide what to include in the in the book? Especially like you said, this is something most of us didn't grow up learning. So you had to kind of educate yourself. And then I'm sure it was just so much information. How did you decide which, because I know it's like key moments in history, right? Yeah, it's key moments in history. And also I was one of the uh, students way back in the day in the 80s um, that got Asian American studies on campus at Wellesley. So mm -hmm. there were certain things we can, we don't change history right that stuff already happened what i think is difficult is trying to figure out uh what what are the most what are the salient points what are the most important things that kids in particular need to know about our history and i think that was probably the most difficult thing is uh choosing and also presenting potentially some difficult things in history but they still need to learn about it and how do we do it in a way that uh is um instructive but also age appropriate but not dumbing down things for kids Right, it seems like that's a hard balance to make, especially middle grade, where they're really able to understand these difficult issues, but you don't want to kind of overwhelm them. Um, so how did the collaboration work? Uh, Amy and Alex, were you did you write the text and then send it to Louis, or was it kind of like a back and forth? How did, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned before, we've collaborated uh, on graphic novels before, so it's it wasn't an entirely new process to us. Uh, after 
extensive discussions with um, the Asian American Foundation and, as I mentioned, the AAZU uh, project. Uh, we basically we have like an we had an outline of like the essential topics that we needed to cover, uh, at least like in the uh, course of the series. And from then on, it was just up to us to figure out like how do we weave how do we weave a narrative involving uh, our titular uh, uh, main character uh, children that can that can basically like appeal to readers while also uh, taking them through history uh, in a way that immerses them and makes them feel empathy for it. And so uh, right now we're, we're right now we're still um we're, we're, we're working on volumes two and three, but we've uh, uh, been we've managed to just like put together like a put together like a chronological storyline in terms of AAVI history that uh, in, in a way that like helps uh, open these, uh, open our main characters eyes to these events mm -hmm. and uh, like help them uh, get their own takeaways from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way it usually works in the co comics world is that of course the writers come up with a script and to the extent possible, we, we work with the artist, but the artist tends to be kind of like the director and the one that brings these characters to life. So uh, and I've, we worked with Louis before. We did a little Rick and Morty with him before. He did a, a, a really amazing cover. And with uh, Louis, uh, which is very useful, is when we come up with the characters and he when he draws the characters, they come to life. And it's mm -hmm. much easier to write a story when we see the actual character that he's created. And then going from there makes it a lot easier. So is it so Louis, how was that for you? So you helped kind of create the characters and then sent it back to them or how, what was, what was it like um, from your end? I don't remember <laughs> so long ago, <laughs> but I, I think you gave us, I think you gave me the description of the characters, right? Yeah. And I, we give them know, I just, like a paragraph. Just, we give them like a paragraph of this is a kid. And so all the emotions and that mm -hmm. personality, he, he draws that in. That's, 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 that's the cool part of being in comics. Yeah. So how long would it take you, Louis, say, when you get the script from them to, how long does it take to do it? Because it's just a massive amount of illustration when you, you know, for this versus say like a picture book or something else, um, it's, it just seems like that would be very time consuming. Uh, um, I don't know. It just takes a long yeah. time. I, I think uh, he has the hardest it's what, job. whatever the time limit is that they give, give me, I'll, I'll just work with it's that. <laughs> Well, so um, um, this book is a collaboration with, as you mentioned, the, the Asian American Foundation, published by Third State Books, which is the first independent publishing house focused on Asian American stories. So what did it mean for each of you to be working on this project? I mean, you've kind of touched on this a little more, but, but could you say just kind of how, what, what did this mean for you personally? Well, it was a pretty big, it's a pretty big honor to work with the Asian American Foundation and uh, Norman Chen, uh, one of the uh, co-founders of the organization, and at the, like the the main goal behind this whole project and our work into it is that not only do we we, we want to uh, we want to like show that a we want to represent AAPI uh, uh, and Native Hawaiians better, and it's not just in like not just in educating uh, uh, audiences about the history, but also showing that like we can. We as writers, artists, and publishers can put the work in and make something really, really fantastic uh, for everyone to read. I mean, right. it's, it's always good to, to, to do something which has impact on people, right? I mean, this is fundamentally, we're in such a society now, sometimes what, 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 what is the meaning of what we do? And if there's anything that uh, we do as writers to be able to uh, educate, but also entertain people, it's really important. Yeah. How about you, Louis? I, I know it was also kind of funny because we, we had a chance yeah. about ahead of time, you were talking about how a lot of times you're so immersed in just the creative process of making the book. And then once it's out in the world and then there there's a launch party and there's all these events and press that you kind of aren't thinking about maybe necessarily when you're creating it. Have you been surprised at the at the response that you've gotten so far? Yeah, I, yeah, like you mentioned, we talked a little bit before and um, yeah, where I was working on it, I just, didn't really think like, like um, the reach and how big it will be at the end. Um, I don't know if Amy and Alex like thought about this, you know, the, the end product, you know, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I'm just like so focused on drawing and like reading the script and finishing it. And I just didn't think the, 
the reach, you know, but yeah, I'm really glad that like that that I was brought on to work on the project, you know. Right. right. And and so now that you have the first one, I mean, maybe it's too soon to talk about it, although you say you've already you're already working on volumes two and three, because the volume one just launched. But what what is the whole series? How do you envision the whole series laying out? Is it is it gonna go chronologically or is it kind of different themes or how what are volumes two and three are gonna be about? Well, I'm I mean, for the sake of, uh, you know, because these, these are meant, these, it is um, to a certain degree entertainment, but it is educational and it's easier to more or less keep it in a chronological way, but we still are, have to also make a cohesive story. But you are going to find like, again, because we start off uh, 1700s, 1800s. So we're going to work our way up to present day for sure. Um, we may go back and forth a little bit in terms of time frame, but you will find that it's a progression as uh, immigration to the U.S. has progressed. And so there's going to be, uh, we'll be covering South Asian, Southeast Asian a lot more because, again, the demographics changed, the immigration waves have changed. Um, a lot of the immigration came after the Civil Rights Act, very important, especially this month, to acknowledge that a lot of us would not be here if it wasn't for that. So uh, we'll be touching on that. And of course, the kids have a goal, right? They're learning for a reason and they're learning initially because they're assigned this, it's their class project. So you can imagine that we're gonna have a pretty cool ending with their class project by volume three. Yeah, that's that's really fun. I like how, I, I love the way that that's structured for that. And, and I'm also curious and apologize, I did not give you this question ahead of time. I was just thinking about it as you're talking. For each of you, was there something that you learned about the history i know amy you said that you had kind of studied this history already in college but was there a particular story or time period that something that really surprised you that when you were putting this together that maybe you hadn't known about before that really struck you um i, I think it's already touched upon um in some of the promotional things for the book uh, like the manila men i didn't know anything about that um and even like stuff in the, the future volumes, uh, I think like American history in high school, I think we kind of end around like the civil rights like time period. And then that's like, that's the end of the school year. So I'm glad that we're able to touch on things that are more quote unquote current, but right. not that current. <laughs> yeah, and at least on my end, uh, cause I, I, we've mentioned I'm closer to the, uh, the, the age of like their, our target audience. I never, I never learned about the Manila Men, and I didn't even learn about like topics like the Page Act and the Exclusion Act, which we're covering in Volume One. And it seems, it, it seems kind of uh, tragic that I didn't learn about it, considering how relevant it is, like mm -hmm. to, as a Chinese American, because I had no idea that uh, that uh, the first like Chinese uh, immigrants had so much trouble trying to settle down in America and start a family because the government kept passing all of these like laws that like restricted them from like bringing their families over and like uh rest like restricted them from like getting uh getting citizenship and so working on this and learning all this like uh at the same time it's uh it, it gives me like gives me a greater motivation to see this project through because i want to be able to uh help all of the other um students that didn't know this information like i did i think for me and then uh, it's not like I knew everything. Uh, there's there's uh, quite a bit of, because we did a lot of research and we work with a lot of uh, academics and students and teachers. So it's vet, been vetted by a lot of different people. But I think the things that in particular I noticed is um, tone. A lot of times that Asian Americans in history have been sort of portrayed more as victims of certain things, that they're very mm -hmm. passive. And uh, in the research what we're finding is, of course, there was, it's not that there were, um, you know, people just sort of accepted racism and just, right, that there's actually a lot, of, the Chinese a hundred years ago were actually quite litigious. So, you know, they would actually sue, but then they would lose. So, yeah. you know, uh, and occasionally they would win. And so we try to cover a little bit of that because I think that there is a, a, a perpetuation of uh, stereotypes as Asians being kind of passive about mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And that's simply not true. There's a, you know, so we try to highlight where, um, you know, we, we try to fight against um, uh, unjust legislation, for example, um, and uh, like Mamie Tate, for example, you know, where she sued because she was 
not her mom actually was not allowed to go to school with the white kids and they sued um and so uh, they actually won but of course in the end they didn't win because they basically said oh we just you know uh we'll just set up a separate school for her you know <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um but it, that kind of stuff is not really taught you know and, and ta not taught in that manner and i think we need to highlight what the truth is right Right, and, and I think what all of you have mentioned, it really goes towards uh, kind of the mission of this book that this is help, helping to fight these preconceived notions and stereotypes about one, how long Asian Americans have been in the US, like you're talking about the Manila men, which that's definitely something I never knew about. And, and all these legal issues, like you said, it kind of uh, goes against people's idea of what Asian American history was like. Uh, and I know you have a launch party happening do you want to tell people if there's maybe somebody local in the area you want to tell people a little bit about the launch party happening today yeah sure um so we're very excited we're going there. Outside the venue and, and so louie you got your art is up in standees your 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 character is actually life size oh, wow. so um i could load it into my car and take them home after the party uh it's at the <laughs> hana house hana h-a-n-a -A, uh, in downtown brooklyn uh, and we're looking forward to uh we've got some girl scouts coming tonight so shout out to the girl scouts from mm. chinatown who are going to join us there and it'll, it'll be a really fun time well so if anybody's local should stop by it looks like it's going to be so amazing and I, I want to be respectful of your time because I know you're quite busy, but I thought before we go, do, e do each of you want to maybe share other projects that you're working on? You can kind of give a shout out or things that you have coming out. Maybe, um, Amy, you want to start? Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm behind on my deadlines right now, actually. So you're going to make me confess. Uh, I am working on the next Borderlands graphic novel. I'm also working on the sequel to uh, Carmilla, the first vampire that will be out. Uh, actually, I just finished that. So phew, that's uh, that, that's going to be out uh, this summer. And that actually was partly inspired by this book. Um, it's uh, the uh, set in, it was, the first book was set in New York City, Chinatown. A lot of the history we uh, worked on actually made its way into that book too. And the second book, she will be um, in San Francisco Chinatown, my protagonist. Um, and uh, but this is vampire, so it's not history. But there is a character in there who uh, is now uh, the Chinese version of the vampire zombie. Um, but he was uh, lynched during the 1871 massacre of Los, Los Angeles, which again most people aren't taught about um but i figured out a way to get it into um another book so so you'll read about him shortly i think that was a big spoiler in fact um, but <laughs> anyway that's cut, cut this part out <laughs> that's fine it's fine I, it's you know nobody cares <laughs> how about you alex do you have anything that you're work else that you're working on uh so i well in the middle of all my semesters uh like classwork and studies uh, I am working on a collection of short stories and even a project based on, I mentioned I started writing a personal journal and I'm working on a project that basically like takes, uh, takes influence from the past six years that I've been journaling because that's been my main thing up to, up to writing graphic novels. Uh, so, uh, and I, I, I plan, I'll probably be doing like, I'll probably make like an announcement about, uh, those projects when I, uh, make some good headway into them. So yeah. Good. Well, we will keep an eye out for those. And I, I also want to say, Amy, you got to shout out someone else who loves vampires and ah, really wants to. Yay, do nice. please, please. Thank you. How about you, Louis? What are you working on? Um, I'm in the beginning stages of uh, working on a graphic novel with uh, Scholastic, kind of like um, loosely based on my life as a Chinese American growing up in New York. So it's like a summer camp stories slash like a father and son story but still in the beginning stages of it. Well, very exciting. And when we see uh, any announcements about any of those projects, I've got someone else saying they can't wait to hear about all these in the future. Um, we will be sure to share them in our stories. Thank you guys for taking the time to talk. I know this is a really busy time, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, but we're very excited about it. Again, the book is Fighting to Belong, volume one, and you can look for volumes two and three coming out later. Thank you all for joining us. This. If anybody joined late, this is going to be up in just a few minutes on our Instagram page, and later we will have it on our YouTube channel. Thank you all so much, and thanks to everybody watching. Thank you. No Thank you for having us. Bye. Yes, bye, Thank everybody. You. Take care.